Whoa, and we're live. Hey, John. <laughs> happy, happy, happy Tuesday to you. All right, let me just make sure. Go ahead and talk for me one more time. All right, I'm speaking. Yo, you're live. There we go. It's a beautiful Excellent. thing. Excellent news. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Tuesdays are Tuesdays are like all video now. I have the community stand up and I have I have this exciting show. It's so much fun. Live streaming with John Galloway. Yeah. I can pretend that email doesn't exist for, you know, until like mid afternoon and then get crushed. I just flew in from from uh, visiting the family out in Wisconsin and uh, la- nice. landed this morning uh, and then came wow. right home, watched the Nintendo E3 and then got onto this. And I'm like, let's do this. And then I got to stream the Nintendo podcast later today. It's just like, yeah, kind of took a half day today because it's too yeah. crazy, you know? Yep. So, yep. Yeah. Good fun. Uh, yeah. So how'd the stand up go? Oh, it was great. So we had Dan Roth on. I'm, I'll... Um, I highly recommend the show. It's really good. So he, um, every week, you know, we're talking about different features in ASP.NET and his, uh, his build presentation was very well liked and partly because he, well, partly because he's Dan and he's a great speaker, but partly because he like put everything together and he said, okay, here's, here's a blazer front end here. We have some worker queues on the back end. They're, you know, working against like queues out in Azure. We've got like, like putting all these things together and like a live and it's delivering pizza to you. You order yeah. a pizza and it delivers. So I've seen that overall sample before, but it was really cool how he like, you know, we had a whole hour to dig into it. Oh, that's awesome. So, that's yeah. Nice, yeah. Man. It's good to so, deep dive on that stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, let's see. People are asking what kind of coffee I made a coffee. You made a coffee. Both of us AeroPress. AeroPress, AeroPress life. You can find that in the, Twitch panels below. You can you can you can buy that stuff down there. It's very good. I, I recommend an AeroPress. It's a good single cup brew. Really good. So it's it's a um similar to like a French press. So I I like the you know because so you're uh, I get way too into coffee. I have a lever espresso machine, um, mm. but it takes a while to heat up. So that shuts off at 10 a.m. It's on a timer. <laughs> um, so if I have afternoon coffee, it's AeroPress for me. There you go. Yeah, I'm pretty much the same. I make a pour over in the morning afternoon for the stream just solo cup because it, you know it can get it done in a few minutes while the stream is prepping and stuff so so william yeah that's what we're brewing you did a cold brew so did you make it then with just oh, cold coffee no, or sorry you pour it? i aeropress and then dump some ice in <laughs> cool it's down. a little hot here it was like high 90s yesterday so mm. um yeah so i'm i'm uh, keeping it cool very awesome so, nothing um, is yep. impossible more and more subs. House, uh, thank you for the three-month Twitch Prime. And also Mortal coming in for his six-month. Oh, the Mortal, he or she. I don't know Mortal 100%. I don't know anybody in this stream. So I got to be mm. I got six months. Now you got the big bearded goodness. So AeroPress, yeah, it's just good. It's just so simple. You just, you get yeah. it. You don't use a lot of beans either because it's fine mm-hmm. espresso style. Yep. Yep. And, you know, I used to, I did the, so I used to, I mean, I've gone through them all, but I did the, the mocha pot, the Italian pot on the stove top and those are okay, but you got to keep an eye on it. It mm-hmm. takes a little while. Yeah. And it's like, um, I left one on one time and, and it like melted some of the plastic. I'm like, this is, this is too complicated. <laughs> and then uh, I did uh, French press for a while, but the French press is like a pain to clean out. You know, you got to scoop the grounds out and stuff. So the arrow press is really cool because you plunge it down and then you just unscrew the bottom and pop the, Pop the coffee grounds out. Yeah, put it right into the compost. Yep. Yeah. Wonderful. So, yeah, and I agree. the The issue that I've always had with I like a good French press because you can kind of set it and forget it and not think about it. Mm-hmm. But you just got to use so much beans. There's just yeah. so much beans to be used. So yeah. Ah, uh, uh, someone says oh, so. Alan, good old Alan Ritchie, welcome to the chat. Alan it says Tim Hortons in Canada. You don't have to worry about these problems. <laughs> <laughs> I don't so I don't know what that means. Uh, is Tim Hortons good coffee? Um good is a is a Yeah, right. That's a word you could use. Is this uh, like Dunkin Donuts coffee? To me it's very reminiscent of a Dunkin and mm-hmm. uh whenever I do go to Canada, I always stop at a Tim and say, "Hey Tim, thanks for the coffee." It's mm-hmm. kind of like a I, I could, there it's it's kind of like a Dunkin Donuts because um, they have all the food items that you would expect, but I think also donuts and things too. People can correct me in the chat if you're from Canada land. Um, right. but you know, it's, it's like there's Tim Hortons and subways everywhere in Canada. Like that's mm. the thing. Like you just can't not find a subway. I mean, you find them <laughs> everywhere here too, but 
they're there yeah wow. <laughs> everyone's gonna leave the stream though because that stream everyone's like boom <laughs> i will say i mean whenever i go to boston i always get boston's best coffee dunkin donuts mm. so we don't now, have I them used, here we don't i have used to even roast my own coffee i haven't been doing that for a while but i've been looking into getting in it so I used to do the whole, like, you know, I mean, I've tried all the different, like, DIY style ones. And I think it's about time to actually buy an actual roaster and just, mm. you know. The one problem with it is, unless you spend a ton of money, they, they don't make a whole lot at once. Yeah. Um, but fresh roasted beans are nice. I do. I just got back into the fresh roasting. I talked about this on a stream. Heather got me a little set top. It does about four ounces at a time. It's like mm. a it's like almost like a popcorn popper in a way but it's it's yeah. an official it's an official one you got there's different temperatures on it, it gets super hot you got to mix it you got to do the things uh it's really yeah, nice which, but which one is it um let me go to sweet maria and see because i was uh, looking at these recent and sweet maria's is awesome i'm i'm a fan of them too yeah if you go uh, to sweet maria's it's gonna be the uh fresh roast that's what it yeah, is yeah that's one i was so they actually have one now that is um I don't know. It's like IOT. Like it has like a whole, you can program mm. roasting profiles for it. That's cool. I like yeah. that. So, I mean, you have to do that kind of, yeah. and then, you know, you gotta go, you gotta go up. Yeah. That's what <laughs> I like. I, I know that Larry, uh, from our docs team, he uses just a electric popcorn popper Yeah. for his beans. So. so I've done that. I've even done, um, on, on the grill, like you can use a what i know this sounds ridiculous but i actually read about it on uh from sweet maria's forums use a like a stainless steel dog bowl like the dog food bowl oh. and you put it on a grill and as long as your grill gets hot enough you got to kind of keep an eye on it and stir it but you can do like a good pound or more at a time there oh. That's nice. So, yeah, and that's yeah. always the problem with like the the fresh roaster. So Sweet Maria's, I get all my green beans from from Sweet Maria's, mm -hmm. which is great. Such a great deal. Because then you can get a pound, and then if you roast it yourself, it's like five bucks for a pound. Yeah, for like awesome, yeah, really high quality yeah. beans and like super fresh and super cheap, and it's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I've always wanted to get into it even more. Uh, so it's on my list. So when you do it, we should we got to set. Uh, John up to be able to like do coffee roasting live streaming. That would be fun. That would, cool. That's a thing. Yep. Million, million dollar idea, people. Uh, <laughs> all right, cool. So uh, first off, uh, Lack Lackum Ka X, thank you for the uh, follow as well. Appreciate that, and of course all the the subs. I super duper appreciate that. John, what are we doing today? Today we're going to keep building out our community stand up page. I guess I could share my desktop. Yeah, let's so, see if that works. We forgot to test it. I was I was going and getting a smoothie. I was prepping for the coffee and then I didn't even I yeah. just I just imagine OBS. We're just, just like what could go wrong? Of course it'll be fine. Skype okay, and, that, oh, that's yeah, like it. you, right? Yeah, that's me. Okay. So yeah, so the problem we're solving is there's this live.asp.net site. Yep. Which is cool. Um so we have we start we've been doing this community stand up. We were doing them every Tuesdays and just on YouTube. Now we're on Twitch. We're also on Thursdays, and we do mobile. We do cloud. We do tools. We do all kinds of .NET stuff because .NET goes everywhere. And sorry, I knocked something over. Um, so anyhow, um, so now uh, we want to kind of make a, a new one that goes everywhere, works with Twitch, works with all the stuff. So we're out at – we're working at uh, my GitHub, live.net is what we called it for now. Mm -hmm. And here's our, our – um, project as we kind of work through stuff. So we got, we set up a basic site. We put down our list. Uh, so we basically created a very simple, just list of shows. Yeah. Um, and then we looked at what we want to do next is some of this stuff, you know, deal with mock data. Um, I, I also wanted to start like actually integrate this in with the YouTube AT API. Um, and we cheated a bit by looking because the previous site here, um, I looked at the code, and there uh, Damien's actually using a. The, there's a YouTube. I should have looked at this before. There's a hmm. there's a data API client library for .NET. That's cool. Yeah, and so and the, and the, if we move fast, we could be the first ones. Oh my goodness! To get the latest and greatest, get supports, the absolute latest. It says it, it um, incomplete. 
Silverlight and Xamarin. But I'd imagine it should just work as .NET standard, right? Right. So probably right. just didn't test it. Oh yeah, yeah. So good, good point. Um, although, yeah, I'm not sure. Well, we could try it out. We could see. Well, the nice thing is, you know, I think what we're going to do for this back end, we discussed it a little bit last week, is that we want to not have the mobile app like have our API keys, obviously. Right. And yep. what we want to do is we want to instead of having the mobile app hit the YouTube API, mm -hmm. we want to create an Azure function that our website and our mobile app could communicate to. So. What do we yep. want to? What do we want to? Should we pull this in? Is yeah. So get to you, sir. How do you want? Yeah. Do let's it? let's just go for it. So yeah, I was thinking the way I kind of like to work with some of this stuff is like, um, oh yeah. So when we do our API keys, I'm actually going to have to like pop this over in another window, right? But oh, I, the, I can always um I can always do secrets. So if you want me to hide the screen, I can I can do shh secrets, and then no one can see your screen. Like, is that true? Did. Well, I have a button that hides your screen, and then it brings it. Oh, back. neat, neat. Well, I'm not going to do it the second because I haven't created my API keys. <laughs> oh, okay. Got All right. So, so let's go in. Let's add that. Let's just. Why not? Yeah. So, and, and then we last week on the show, we if we go into this uh, into the app structure here, we have an ASP.NET Core website mm -hmm. and a .NET standard, and we just said like, here's what our show is going to be. Like, we just defined what our show is going to be, and sort of. Right. What the data is inside of it going to be like. So here's the topic, here's the thumbnail, and we're going to figure mm -hmm. it out from there, basically. Yep. Yeah. We're just, we're just kind of, we actually, we just kind of stole this also off the previous site because, you know, there's no need to reinvent everything. I trust Damien. He, he writes some okay code. Well, and this uh, is kind of a interesting sort of best practice that I like to say, because if you're using a third party API, and you just hit it directly and you're serializing and deserializing it. Like if they mm -hmm. change the API, then you have to update every single client because you know. Yeah. But yep. here the back end will do the mapping. And since we'll put it eventually into a function, mm -hmm. if they change it or we want to change it, we change it in one place and then it, everyone gets it. Yeah. And I really like this pattern for develop. So I, I like to, it's all self-contained, build it in a website just because I'm comfortable with websites, but you could build in a console app or whatever, get some working code and then push the logic up into functions, yeah. populate JSON data, and then you can make your clients simple and lightweight and they're just hitting, you know, pulling from a, a JSON blob or something. Yep. So. yep. Cool, cool. All right. So, you know, and also you mentioned the, the client library and I was interested with this because recent .NET Core has added in support for this uh, for an HTTP client, and I'm guessing they're probably not. I I don't know if they're using that. I haven't dug through their source code, but HTTP client's nice because it has support for things like policies, so you can say like automatic retry and you know exponential fallback and all that kind of stuff. Got it. Um, but um, yeah, for now let's use the you know the one they made and worry yes. worry about you know. Okay, so so here, I believe, Google Data, YouTube API. So their latest stable is 2.2.0. And let's see. Looking at the Google API. Oh, Google we API want dot .v3, though, right? I think we want dot .v3. I have to copy and paste that thing. Yeah. Boop. V3 version 1.4.0. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again, version version numbers don't matter. So. Right. Okay. Cool. I think that looks good. That's Let's install it. Million million and a half installs. That's crazy. Hey, a million developers can't be wrong. Can't be wrong. Or can they? Bum, bum, bum. Okay. So I actually want to except the the stats don't refresh immediately. What I would love to be able to do is pop over here and be like have a badge like where it's like you you're the first, first. <laughs> yeah you yeah first <laughs> awesome all right so whoa i just clicked the wrong thing so i actually i don't know if you do this i have my here's visual studio and i actually have the visual studio installer just on my taskbar because i'm always updating mm, it yeah and so i just pop over there but i, I updated this morning yeah good job um, cool. All right. So we've got that. And then just, you know, for, uh, in case people don't know, 
Uh, so the the CS proj file, this is where that's adding that in, right? So that's I could have just manually gone and typed this in as well. Do we want to create a, another like where are we going to put this service? Because it probably doesn't need to be in the shared code because um, the mobile apps are not going to use it, you know? Yeah. So that's an interesting question. I was starting like at a prototype level, just hmm. throw it in the web app and yeah. then refactor it. Um, do that. Yeah. Cause like we'll, 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 we'll prototype it and then we'll de- oh, and we'll create the shows. And then at some point it won't really matter where the, the backend data is coming from, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Cool. All right. So, and then I guess I'm thinking maybe create like, um, services, Gotta have a services folder. Do we want interfaces? Do we need interfaces for everything? <sighs> so, so I don't know. I end up, especially like, cause I would see this kind of almost as like spike code. Of course, the the slippery slope is then eventually do you end up just shipping it and you do it wrong. But I don't know that we'll need an interface if we're not going to be like stubbing anything. You know what I mean? Are we going to have like a fake service and a real service? Um, no, maybe, yeah, maybe, I don't know. Nah, uh, mm. I don't Probably know. Not. <laughs> Some of, you know, looking at this and also looking at the existing app, ours gets a decent amount simpler because for instance, we don't need any kind of, this one has a whole thing where you go through an admin and you, you set up a show and all that, where mm. we're using just our, the YouTube list of shows is the list of shows and we're doing things kind of convention based that way so okay cool all right so so there we go so we've added that in um and then you know i could even as a start i could compare what we've got with damien's i'm looking here there's a i'm trying to read through the their documentation yeah and the documentation's interesting because a little sparse it's a little sparse and it's um so they do have like if I want to go through so say for instance as I go into uh play YouTube videos, um there's guides and samples and stuff like that, right? So if I go into guides and then there's a YouTube data API, um, which did it take me right back where I started? This is basically where I was wanting the data API overview. Okay. Um, and there's a few things as far as kind of getting this set up where you can you can use two different authentication types. You can do using and – and I went through and kind of started plunking around on it. Um, you can either use an API key or you can use OAuth. Uh, okay. Yep, I see it here. And even in the .NET specific guides, I see there's – yeah, these APIs do not access any private user data, which we don't need. Your application must authenticate itself as an application belonging to a Google API Council project. This is needed to measure project usage for accounting purposes. I like that. That's cool. You just mm-hmm. need to get an API key and then you include it with every call. Perfect. Yeah. Cool. So, so, and so, I believe from from that reading, we you can do OAuth two or you can do API key. Mm. And I I'm guessing because we're going to want to push this up into a function that we'd want to do this using the API key approach. Yeah, and I don't think there's really any data that we're going to need from YouTube that we wouldn't have already. As far as user-specific information, it's all public playlists that we're... We don't need any private data. Everything's public data anyway. Right, right. Yeah, so did you actually see in there where it's saying... Oh, here it is. Oh, no. Is there a thing where it says you need OAuth and if you're going to do a specific thing? It says OAuth 2. Whenever your application requests private user data, it must send an OAuth 2 token mm-hmm. with it. It says API keys. A request that does not provide an OAuth token must send an API key. It identifies the project and provides API access quota and reports. The API supports several types of API. Yeah, that's it. This is basically... Cool. Yeah. All right. So I went through here. I did this, um, so I actually, you know, like you click through the link here where it says what, um, you know, obtain authorization credentials. I created a new app, so I called okay. it live, live standup. And then here where we do create credentials, I can say API key. 
And then there it does that. And I'm actually going to like re reset this as soon as I, you know, uh, whatever. Um, so, so there's like an example where it would create an API key, right? Got it. And that's so a, is that under? This is just a personal one that I oh, created. I see. So and then we'll, we can reset in the future, right? We just need a key. So now everyone's so, going off and they're deleting everything. Yeah, exactly. So you should probably delete so, that. Right. right. So then I can do that. I can actually go here. Quick, quick, oh, go, no. Go. Ah! Okay, cool. So the idea, though, is that I'll, I'll create that API key. Okay. And then, um, then the other thing you have to do is you have to, in library, you have to say YouTube. Uh, you got to go, like, flip it on. Yeah, you turn on that feature, right? But, yeah, so, here's an API. Here's an API key, but then you need to attach what services What can that key it. do? Yeah, yeah exactly. You don't so, want to do everything. That'd be that'd be bananas. Right. Exactly. Which, yeah, exactly. Because you want to um, restrict. So if somebody does get your API key, they can't like do everything. They can only like pull down a list of videos or something. Right. Makes sense. Cool. Okay. So let's see if we're following directions. Um, so here we've got go to the console, enable that. Then we're going to um, turn on my credentials. So on my other screen, I'm doing this, create credentials. Um, so keep going back and forth. But <laughs> here, so this is interesting. Which API are you using? API v3. Where will you be calling from? And so I believe we're going to want to say. Web server. Let's start with that. And we're getting public data, right? Yeah, public data. So this is nice. And I actually, I wish the docs were this clear, right? Because it walked me through. It's going to say, you need an API key. And darn it, there you go again. Yeah. Yeah. So now I can say, um, I can say, first of all, restrict key. Get rid of that one. Delete the key. But that's, I, I do think that it's worthwhile to kind of go through and show, you know, here's here's um, how you get that key. I think so. I, when I do a lot of Android development, usually setting up API keys for Google Maps and for any of the other services. It's even push notifications. It's it's almost as bad as iOS provisioning profiles. It's just all over the place. So it's one thing that, you know, the problem is websites change all the time. So I don't think documentation likes to document websites, but super mm -hmm. important because like I need to know where to click, you know? Yeah. And I know we messed that up too at Microsoft, right? Because part of the joy, part of what's nice about working on the web. It's like, boom, boom, boom. I just updated yep. the website. But then on the other hand, it's like, and you know, I, a lot of respect to the docs team, mm -hmm. like Microsoft docs team for keeping things as up to date as they do, because also even like visual studio changes all the time. Right. So I agree. Yeah. That's crazy. Okay. So I have created, this is on my other screen. I have an API key. Um, and then I can go through and, and further restrict it and stuff like that. But now let's go in and see, so it says select the client library. So we are looking for API client for .NET. That sounds about right. Did you put your Did you put your little secret key into that JSON magical JSON file? I did not. So we'll okay. look again at how I would do that. Okay. Um, so if I go in here and do manage client side or manage user secrets, then here's this. Yeah. Right. And so. You know, what's nice about this is this is actually in my app data folder. This is not, so I can commit all my code into, you know, into the GitHub repo and it's not going to go there. So I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to move off the screen when I copy it in, but I'll just say like, um, YouTube key. Yeah. I'm going to create one in our app settings, JSON to match it. Capital D yeah, T in there. Okay. Uh, key. key. And then I'll put it as no key. Put cool. API key here. Awesome. So now I can do that. And then if, if, you know, anyone else is doing this sort of thing on their own, they want to play along at home, they can do that. And, um, you know, you, you have this. So here yeah, you can put it there or yeah, if you just want to mess around your oh. local machine, you can put it in that app. Yep. So this is neat actually with visual studio. Now you can drag and drop things around. Right. So I actually threw it on a different monitor. There you go. As you know, I'm crazy. All right, so there. Whoop. Okay, so now, that's saved. Now, and like now, saying, now, now we just need to make sure anytime you open that file ever in the future that you we we black out your screen. 
Right. Because it's a secret until everyone on Twitch can see it. Yeah. And honestly, it doesn't really matter that much. I, I don't, I'm not going to wake up in the middle of the night worrying that somebody is accessing public API. Public API. Data. Data. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So there's that. Um, let's, uh, what I'm thinking is we could go in and we could even like, if they have a thing that says, go get me a list of YouTube videos, we could just try mm -hmm. dropping in their sample. Although, wow, that's a lot. Well, we did find out that we did find out that last week, uh, that it's the playlist items, uh, item that we need. To yes. Get. And that's the one yes. we're going to look for to get all the playlist items. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to also create another, cause I almost want this website to be very generic. So anybody could kind of create it themselves and just plug and play. So instead of trying to like hard code anything into mm -hmm. the website, we should put it into like a app, like setting area, right? Just in general. So I think, uh, kind of tell cool. me what you're talking about here into oh. app settings. So what I mean is let's say I do yeah, go into your app settings inside of there. And then what I can do is I'm going to say on a community standups. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say list one second here, copying from the internet. So what we'd want to do is go into app settings and then we would say playlist YouTube playlist ID, right? Mm -hmm. And then here, put that there, right? Boom. Cause like then if someone wants to just do it for their playlist, all I got to do is put in these values then done often in mobile world. We don't really use an app settings.json, although I'm, you know, I did a presentation with Glenn Condren about how you can reuse a lot of the ASP.NET stuff to do this. Mm -hmm. um, and in that instance, um, most people just create like a constant.cs. So it's just like a constant file. And it's like, here's all my constants. All right. But this is kind of nice because then everything's still in one place here. So there you go. Boom. That's our playlist ID. Good. Good stuff. Okay. And just checking on, uh, on chat. Any, um, yeah, cool. Everyone's right. just, everyone's just like, whoa, mind. <laughs> and I, and I do, and we're always in a live share session too. So that's why you see both of us on there if you didn't watch last week. So yep, it's always fun. Okay. So I'm kind of going back and forth between copying over Damien's, like he's got an existing one. There's also this like playlist updates and all, you know, search and Let's like do a new they one have from scratch, from scratch. Right. I'm ready. Let's do it. So what do we got in the samples here? I'm curious what they've got. Playlist updates. Is this getting a list of? Oh, because they have like all their samples online. Yeah. So yeah. So these are the like official, right? Yep. Is this creating? It's this is create a new private playlist. That is not what I want. This is completely unhelpful to me in any way um okay yeah because really we just want a get me like list me the playlists right yeah we i probably, could just wing it. we probably need to create this new okay so there's some sort of service that we probably need to use oh yeah. i see okay so I think <laughs> yeah. that they create a new discovery service with like an initializer that takes in that key. Mm. Um, whoa. Um, I just, I was, my mind was blown here actually uh, a second ago. I, I don't, you, I don't want you to do it, but on the Google API docs, like yep. in their sample code, there's like API key and it's like insert your key here. And if you click on it, it opens all of your projects and you can select one and then it will insert into the code that you can copy and then paste. It's bananas. That is magical. Um, yeah. Don't do that. Cause then it would show everyone. Right. Key, then but, we're back into that again. Yeah. So here is an example. And what does this do? The following gets a list of playlist items. I like that. That's what we want to do. This kind of sounded exactly what we wanted to do. Right. Yeah, I like that. So actually I can do a click to copy. I'm not even going to read it. I'm just going to throw it in my project and see what happens. It's cool that they have go.net and Ruby literally right there. It must be obviously very, very popular. The yeah. .net API. Yep. That is cool. Hmm. Um, so, and I'm just curious, what did Damien call his 
YouTube shows service. Oh, I'll combine that too. V2. I'll put dot V2 at the end, v2. right? <laughs> dot V48. I'm looking here. I'm on the yeah, playlist items. Here we go. Hmm. Oh, and I'd already copied it. Is it still on my clipboard? It could be. Crazy. And I wanted to call this, I want to get rid of that, their namespace. And my namespace should be live standup.web. Dot search. All right. This is looking good. Okay, so their sample just runs this code. We can delete this main. Good, good, good. And you're going to call this what? You're going to call it YouTube Shows Services? Yeah, uh, service. service. All right. Yep. Like this big async task run. That's yeah, I don't know around. about that. Internal class, what on earth? Yeah, because you don't want it to be you know, out there. Right. You don't want anyone to actually call your service. Mm -mm. Oh, look. So they are calling into YouTube service. We have a YouTube service and there's a credential. But here, this is going to be our credential. We can pass that in some. I don't think we need this chunk here. Let's think about it. Well, this is going to do the OAuth 2 call. Yeah. Yeah. So let me see about this. I think that when I was on the documentation, what I saw is that this is at least what they did previous. I'm going to slap, slap, slap this code in there. This is what they did, discovery service, which I don't know if that's mm -mm. in there. And then see they have this base client and then application name and API key. See so here what they're doing on line 47. That's OAuth. Yeah. That's OAuth stuff. Well, no, there's, yeah, there's HTTP client initializer. Oh, Maybe they right, are, right. Yeah. I think we yeah. delete, 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 uh, do this, right? API key. Yeah, right in there. And then how do you get the, how do you get the thing from the web config? Ah, uh, yeah, this is really cool. So what you need to do is you need to inject your um, configuration. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, so the way this would work is you could do. So, this is I don't know about this internal class business. That just skews me out. And I say make everything public. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so we'd want an initial or we want yeah a constructor, right? Mm. Yeah, like a public YouTube shows service. Although you you want to know the trick, the faster uh -oh. way to do that. Okay, go ahead. Show me. I'm gonna delete everything. Yeah. There you go. Because I because I do. Wow this me, like, John. Wow me. Okay, ready? Dun 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 dun. C T O R. Every time. Shortcuts. Look at that. Okay. Every so time. we're gonna take an I configuration. Mm, okay, because we're inside of the ASP.NET Core app, and then yeah, this should work. Oh, and look at that. It's doing its little. Yeah, sure. Huh. And also, right. Vin Era, we all. Hello. Welcome to the chat. Uh, appreciate you being here. I think you're back from last week. We're just figuring out our YouTube show service currently. We just copied and pasted code from the internet so you know it's going to work. So here we can. Let's just explore this configuration.get and stuff. And honestly, hmm. I, I don't know the syntax of this off the top of my head. Um, it is It does read from my config. Um, so, and you can see there's some wiring up of this in here. This is where it's actually, see here you're injecting a configuration and you do read some stuff, um, out of there. So, um, but this is, this is that same thing, right? Configuration, configuration. Mm -hmm. So, um, and they actually are using like that, which isn't bad. So they're, they've got an eye configuration config um, and then you can use that within your thing so let me see actually do we call into configuration use that we don't we don't use i think you can just i'm looking here it's like configuration get 
So you can get strongly typed or you can read just by string. So let, mm. let's, let us, I'm still working on this. Let's do okay. what I would do if nobody was watching. Yep. Right. ASP.net read. I'm going through the, do the documentation right now. I'm, I'm almost at all the way to the bottom, but I, oh, get value. Okay. There it is. Yep. So it's just get value and it's just a string, right? Uh, uh, get value. Yeah. And then it's int. So oh, what's neat? Type it. It also yes. has an indexer, Alan Ritchie says. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah, so it's just config and then blah. So, right. So what's cool is with this, you can actually do strongly type config. Uh -huh. And this is kind of like we're just doing this quickly and it's going to change and there's not a whole lot of configuration. But you can have a whole like complex, you know, you can build out a whole class structure and you can just say, go get config and it'll load it in. And, and, uh, so you have strongly typed config stuff. Cool. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. So, yeah. So, so now we can say like, let's, uh, extract this so we can say, um, so, or we could even just set the key cause we're only reading one value. Um, you know what I'm saying? So we could yeah. say, um, uh, string, um, you know, AP or and then, uh, so we could say, yeah, hmm. Alan, Alan was saying that we can have a section basically like, yeah, I guess logging is sort of a section that's inside of it for instance. Yeah, you know what's interesting for me is I um I guess I'm so used to usually when I'm doing these I use the um I'll use like I'll have a database and I'll have identity turned on for my site and stuff and when you do that your startup already has the con that code like set up in here. This is where you're reading your database connection strings. Oh uh, yeah. And so my muscle memory is just pop over here and like look at it because this is part uh, the, the way that config was handled changed a little over time. And so after a while, my brain has started saying, I'm not going to store that anymore because it may have changed. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? Do you, so, do you think you could do something like this on the app config? Like I'm going to go to go to your app config over there, right? And then here, if I did this and then I did like E. Right? Oh, right, right. And then you could also better? say playlist. Right. Yeah. It, yeah. It is better. I guess. Fine. Yeah. Sorry. And then the question is like, when you go and like, if you where where does your overwrites go? Right. You do have to copy and paste this entire thing, basically. Yeah. Because here, this would be like playlist ID, and we could map this in here. Mm -hmm. Right. And then we could we know we need the app name, right? So it'd be like app name. Right in here, because you need to you need to have that. And then this would be uh, live dot dot net. It seems. Uh, actually, I called mine live stand up. Live should... stand up. Yeah, and there was no space. Stand up. Oh, there you go. And then here we can delete all that business. So then you're saying, like in the shows, we can do. What does configuration dot get section give us? So you can do that. Oh, okay. But. If you're doing that, then it's you, like often then for that, you'll want to have like a strong, a class and it's actually going to read in by that. So another oh. thing you can do, so, but look what you can do. Um, you can do with the indexer and you just um, delimit it using a colon. Oh, that's cool. So yeah, so you would go like YouTube colon Online. key. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's better. And then, yeah, we could, Alan's saying that we could inject it, like you're saying, if we create a config class, basically. Yeah. Yep. Cool. And that is kind of like a best practice, you know. But on the other hand, we're we're still kind of like, um, we're still playing with the code at this point. So I, I tend to like just want to refactor stuff. Here, I'll do YouTube. I'm going to put all these YouTubes in here. And we could refactor it later. Yeah, I agree. And then playlist ID. Yeah. Boom. And as an example, a place that I go um, when I'm looking at this, uh, Andrew Locke is a blogger extraordinaire. So if we look at Andrew Locke, um, 
ASP.NET Core strongly typed config. Like he's done all these. Um, mm. Yeah. So he's done like tons of things and in depth series where he's looked at this stuff. Um, so this, this is a reference I recommend, you know, and he shows like, you know, all the kind of trade offs and the, it actually can get relatively complex. Um, but here's a great example. He points out why, like here, this is a problem, right? We could, cause we're just retrieving by string. That's not mm. great. Right. So if yeah. you do move strongly type, there are obvious benefits. So that makes sense. Cool. Well, I, just, I filled it all in. I created our YouTube service. Boom. Excellent. Okay. So I think we'd want to, did we decide we can get rid of this or change, at least change the name from task run? I would think we'd want to say like get shows or something, right? Get shows async. Yes. Because, you know, if it's async, you should probably put async on. Now, do we need do we need to put async? Uh, you know, right. now I'm seeing people are recommending against that because they're like async's all over the place and it's redundant. Alan Ritchie hates it. I mean, it does. It does feel. Old. I mean, I, I believe that it's probably good practice if you have a non async version and an async version of it to distinguish the two. Although technically it doesn't matter because they have different return types well actually maybe that does matter then because they would have different return types and you wouldn't have to specify them so i think right. maybe that's the only time because we're never going to have a get shows that it's not an async task all right let me show you a crazy let me wing some thought leadership at you okay what me. if the new thing is you use sync so you assume everything's async and you put sync at the end if it's not async mm. But is sync too close to async? Oh, it's trouble. Synchronous. <laughs> you, you spell out synchronous. synchronous. Yes. Okay, good. I like long words. Yes. So <laughs> I don't think there's any chance of this working. Should we run it and see? Sure. Yeah. Are you going to call it from somewhere? Yeah. So <laughs> get shows, right? So okay. what if we go into our page? How is it going to inject the configuration? magic okay yeah so that this is just wired through um through asp.net these days um but without interfaces on the the show service it doesn't it doesn't need that oh because uh, you can just register it as a singleton yes ah, that's yeah right. so so actually that is something we need to do right we need to register the show service so we would go in here yeah, right. so th this is important because we talked about this. You know, I'm I'm not again. I'm not an ASP.NET developer, so some of this always boggles my mind. But I'm super familiar with the Xamarin Forms dependency service, where we have, um, we have sort of a get, and it's you can register an interface or a class, and then you can say give it to me, and then when you say get, you actually ask it for a global reference, which is a singleton, or a new fresh right. instance. Where in ASP.NET, you say give me a singleton or add a singleton or mm -hmm. get or add transient. And that's actually the difference is you have a one that's global all the time or a transient that's going to be newed up every time. I think here we can just have a singleton. That seems fine. Yeah. So actually this is, you know, like while we're talking about that now, I actually, I get, um, I get, it's even easier for a lot of the time. You don't even have to register stuff if you're using it in a page. So say for instance, in any of the pages, right. If I'm saying my index page, yeah, it's already registered. Um, it's already wired up for me. So he, on any page, I could just take in an I configuration in my um, in my constructor. So if I create a constructor yeah. and take in an I configuration, it's just config is there. And so if you're, um, I see. So if you're saying if you don't need a global reference to it, you can just new it up in here and then pass it the I config. You or well, you can take your page model. So I'll I'll do it and then I'll get rid of it. Okay. Right? So if okay. I did a show me, right? So here I could say uh, mm -hmm. okay, right? And uh, Visual Studio, thanks. Thanks, buddy. So. Right. And then th this I config is just automatically going to be injected. Like it's all, uh, mm. it'll all, yeah. Because so, the, because uh, the page is registered. Yes. Uh. Yes. So that, that's, that wires that up for you. So. 
Cool. All right. So let's actually, let's do this. So add singleton. And I think we, actually, I'm rusty on this. Do I need to have a dependency? Or I mean, uh, if we register a singleton, you, you always. I think, you'd see, I think you can slap it in there without it. Yeah. Because I don't want another interface. I mean, yeah, you don't need to. You don't need it. Cool. So we can say uh, you. To service. Who is a uh, um, Jimmy Bogard? Is that correct, Jimmy? Or, mm -hmm. or, or he he always had this big di di dilemma about interfaces and like repository structures and all this stuff. And he was like, you know, when was the last time you changed out your entire database and changed, you know, everything? And you needed to test it, and needed to do all this stuff. The mock data makes a lot of sense, but yeah, then we could just have a switch that registers YouTube show service mock, for instance, if debug. Mm -hmm. Like that's how you could do it. You only need one. Alan, uh, so. yeah, okay. Because you don't have an interface. You're right. Yep. So actually, though, let's. And then you need to look. you need to put that in a little, little Pac-Man. A Pac-Man. Here we're yeah. live sharing. I mean, what, what oh, okay. Talking about? <laughs> also, oh. Harry, thank you so much for the <laughs> subscription. I super duper appreciate that. As well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, I like, I like how I'm yelling I at you. But I haven't I could heard just tell that you. term, Pac-Man. That's beautiful. I just, you know, I can't think of words. So there you go. Let me, let me help you, sir. Sir, what are you doing? Hey, oh. hey. No, oh. <laughs> no, we doubled up. There we go. Double the okay. fun. So here you could do that, but if you had an interface, you would say I thing, and then you would do that. Right, 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 but, right. Yeah. Okay. Now we're, now we're wonderful, right. wonderful. This is interesting for me, the muscle memory, because it's usually there's a few services and I'm just kind of like, just just don't like waste a single brain cell on that syntax and just copy. <laughs> yeah. the line above. <laughs> Wonderful. OK, so now we have this service is registered. Mm -hmm. We can take that service in on our page. Right. So mm. we can. Uh, oh, I shouldn't have got rid of that. Right. So I can say. Actually, do I need to inject it? It's registered as a singleton. How do you get it? Yeah, my brain. I guess not. you would. I guess you would need it from your. Right. So we could say, inject the raw class. So. Yeah. If you had the. That get. Get required. If you had the services, you could get the required services. I think you need the service provider at that point to like get it right. But here you can just pass it in. I'll just right, right. Okay. So the namespace is missing. Did I spell it wrong? YouTube shows. Maybe it should just be YouTube service. It's gonna be all the things. Well, here's the problem with that is there's probably um, already a YouTube service. There is, is a, there a YouTube, YouTube service. service? My YouTube service. Ah, uh, don't do that to me. YT service. Well, no, that's good. Wonderful. Okay, so, and then this is unhappy because... What am I doing wrong here? Oh, it's internal. Less accessible. Oh. Yeah, just let it fix it for you. Right-click on that thing. Quick fixes. Main signature. Oh, look at that. Remove? Yeah. Oh, no. Wait. Oh, that's not correct. Wait. <laughs> wait, sorry. That was fun, though. <laughs> All right. Well, I thought it would do it. I thought it would. Uh... Yeah, the YouTube service needs yeah. to be public, right? Yeah. Make everything public. That's, that's see, every time you break the, the make everything public thing. I think everything... you could make it internal, though. I could. You could, okay. Awesome. Okay. So, and then this is this, I could go in there and say dot get. Oh, yeah. Sure. I got you. I got you. Yeah. Thank you. So then we just need to update this mock data, right? Hello. Yeah. Got that. Uh, so here we can do a dot get shows. Yeah. And what actually does that return? Uh, that's a, a problem there. It doesn't return anything. Gets a bunch of shows, but doesn't give them to us. Um, wonderful. So let's see about that. 
So it's an async task, so it needs we need to do the async business. Fortunately, all the pages, you know, base class and everything handle that. So does it return anything? Well, well, so let's see what it's doing. So it says, okay. Do you want to do you want to do the right, where, go ahead. So we got the service, the YouTube service, right? <laughs> I filled that in for us. Then what's it doing here? Okay, so we're saying go get my list. Um, then we're saying my channels list. Do I want channels. the channels? Uh, I think actually we could even hard code that probably. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so then we go. We get related. This. I wonder if this is doing more than we need to. Oh, here we go. So down here, there's the playlist items dot list. Okay. Right. We're there saying go get 50, and then I don't think we need to page through them because we don't need more than. So this has support for multiple calls and paging, and I think we're just getting a few of them. Yeah. So we can probably simplify that down. Um, and here it's just doing console write line. And so I think we'll want to, we actually have this class, right? We have a show class. And so we can say, like, we can create a list. We can return a list of shows. All right. So I'll make this a task of I enumerable. Wonderful. Love it. Of show. Mm -hmm. We called it. Yeah. Yeah. I can't bring in the IntelliSense. Can I bring in the IntelliSense? Oh, I can. There we go. Lighten up. So William asks if, do we ever use Rider or ReSharper? I used to reuse ReSharper a long time ago, back in the day. Uh, I've played around with Rider, but you know, I got, got my live share. Visual Studio's kind of got everything I need, but eh, wherever you feel productive and writing .NET code anywhere. But yeah, I used to I used to use ReSharper a long time ago. And how come in your Visual Studio everything is capitalized? You, it's oh, it's up yelling in the top. Why is your Visual Studio yelling at you? So that's interesting. There <laughs> is a setting where you can go into huh. the options and turn that off. Oh, okay. really? Bugs some people, but I, I kind of like, you know, this is, I think it's actually, that's the standard install now, isn't it? No, mine's, mine's not. Mine's That's lower. funny. I think I turned it on then. Let's, let's look in here, uppercase. You know, yeah. Because I remember them adding that, what, 2015? It was like the default and everyone's like, rawr. I know. I actually left it because I'm like, screw you guys. If you, if you get like worried about your ide yelling at you i mean you're gonna, that's that's like the easiest part of my day you know it's like okay so we need to return okay we need to return an i enumerable right yes so and then another thing here is do we seriously i would like to simplify this in a few ways one is do we need to list channels i believe no i believe we want one channel i think we want one playlist so what this default is doing is going through all of the channels finding my channels and then looping through all of my channels and grabbing related playlists uploads mm -hmm. and looping through all of them but we know the idea and i think we can pass that in as a parameter into the request we can say give me this playlist id specifically that so we work. really basically need this code i think so yeah let's i'm gonna go let's yeah chop let's it. Just... chop it down so we do want, okay, there we go. Yeah. And then we want to get rid of the, this stuff here too, basically. Yeah. You don't need all that paging business. Oop. All right. What is exploded? Okay, so we do need our playlist ID, which we can pull in from our config. Clean this code up here and I can say bar shows equals new list of said show. Yeah. Can I just tell you how fun this whole live share and, and, uh, yeah, this is neat. Can I do that? Is that, is that how big it capacity? I don't know. Look at me capacity in it up. Well, wow. Oh yeah. You have the playlist. We have it. I, I have it right there. YouTube playlist ID. Okay. And All right. Page cool. token. I bet we don't need to, we don't that need in. I'll just comment it out for now. Okay. And then max results of 50. We can do 25 probably, right? Yeah, and 
like we want to be fancy, right? We could do const int way up top and say results. Mm. Turn. What are we calling it? Or number number of shows. Oh, watch this. Oh, you're gonna love this. Shows and then I can get my shift key to work equals twenty five. Bam. Nice defaulting. You know? Love it. Yeah. And look at me go. So now we can get rid of yeah that. Wow. Wonderful. Okay, this is cool. Now what is this returning? This is returning right. This is a var playlist response. I'm curious what a playlist response even looks like. Well, you deleted all the code, so. Right. <laughs> Oops. But I think you can loop through the items in it, if I remember. Yeah. Oops. So. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, bar. Bar me. Item. One. Playlist items list response. That's a long. Uh, right. Watch this. Yeah, how's that? There's a request, mm -hmm. and then there's yeah. a response. <laughs> I think it's. I think, we, I think it was dot items on it too. Uh oh, yes. Yeah. This is good stuff. Okay. That's a playlist item. Now, what is a playlist item? Question. Yeah. Item. So we're going to be doing some mapping here. Oh, not too bad. No, not bad at all. So we could we could uh, create a show. I'm curious how you do this. Do you, would you create a new one and just say list.add? Or you could even do um, shows.add. Or a yield return. No. <laughs> That's true. You always, you know, the yield return. The amazingness that nobody uses. You want me to? Uh, you can you can live your life if you want. The uh, does it work in an async await? It does, I think, right? Yeah, you could yield return that, or a link method. William says in the chat. You know, link we, always like starts easy, and then after a while, I'm like, oh, this is a little tricky, and I end up unrolling it. Yeah, can can you do like if we did like if we did like var show equals new? You can show, always do that. And then like if you did. And then you do like yield return show. Does that actually, does that give you a squiggly? Like that actually works. This is, that is bomb. This is wonderful. Yeah, because you're going to loop through that. I'm pretty sure that works. Someone can validate yeah. this after, but. Yeah, so what I'm thinking here is. All of these ways, by the way, that we've just mentioned, literally, have, it's, I'm pretty sure the performance is exactly the same. It's not going to matter. Yeah. In this well, instance, you don't have to allocate that, though. So. Yeah, and it is interesting because, yeah, so you could even do yield return and, like, inline it all. You could say yield return new show. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you could do that. Do that. Do it. All right. All right, I will. And I'm going to do the initializer like that. What do you think of this? No, new line. Don't do that. Uh, well, that, yeah. Not animals. <laughs> okay, so here, and I can do control space, and we can say ID equals uh, item dot ID. We're we're like dangerously close to auto mapper territory now, right? I'm not. I, yeah, I never. I've never used auto mapper ever in my entire life because I'm not a web developer. We just never. I never used it. I know yeah. a lot of mobile developers use it too. I've never used it ever. So here, Is that bad? yeah, not I don't bad. know. So here, this does not actually, does it return? Does it have description? Dot. Oh, I mean, wow. Is there, um, what, uh, you know, so it's requesting the, the snippet up here. See where it says list? Yeah. Oh, Should, do there, you think it's snippet? What's in a snippet? What is a snippet? That's, is that a, like a deep question? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Can we look? Let's look at this. Yeah. Right. Gotta be in here. What is Playlist it? items list. Oh, there's that. Is that the code that you copied? Yeah. 
Well, they just returned. Oh, snippet title. That's interesting. Video ID. That's probably what we want for the ID of it. Yeah, I was going. It's we're lucky that we stumbled across that, right? Good thing there's documentation. So here we can go item dot snippet. Is that right? Video mm -hmm. ID. Uh, also, I forgot. Al also, Alan is telling us that uh, Alan Ritchie is telling us that we can't do it. The yield return because oh. because the the error output will tell us no, but. We'll see. Okay. You would think you put a squiggly, but yeah. Do do something for me. I'm, I can't do it on my end. Can you can you go to definition on the snippet? Oh, I can Let's do see. it on my end. Oh no, I can't do it. Can I do it on my end? Oh my goodness, I can't do that far. Yeah, and then what is it? Play item snippet. It's a JSON property. Yeah, but what's it? no no the, contains basic information about the playlist item, such as its title and position in the playlist. Mm. Can you dive into that one deeper? Can you go to definition? Yeah, but I'm curious. That? What is the ID? What is the ID? The unique identifier. We're gonna need to debug that. Thing. You know, so that's interesting. So I guess there's a different ID for a playlist item versus a video. Oh, yeah, that makes right. sense. Yeah. So I think we can get everything from the snippet. And actually, yeah. let's let's go deeper down the rabbit hole, go to definition. So here's all our stuff there, right? Yeah. So description is going to be items description. I'm, yeah, there we go. So it's all off the snippet. Yeah. Sound good? Okay. That sounds good. Title, title. Yep. So here. Man, it's. I wonder how closely the the other the, code looks like. Yeah, like oh, what did I do wrong here? That's a resource ID. Do I not want resource? Oh, I just no, want a description. description. Yeah. Boop. I want to go to. I want to see what also this other thing. What is that? I'm going to Google it. playlist item content. I don't know what that is. Yeah. Date. Publish date. Is there a published at? Oh, interesting. Content details has a video ID, start at, end at, note, video published at. Mm hmm. Oh, wait, which? Are we using the wrong one, do you think? Or is I don't this... know. Well, let me see. Why is, why is sn Snippet is an object contains basic details about a playlist item, such as its item, its title, and position, and list. And then the content details object is included in the resource if the included item is a YouTube video. The object contains additional information about the video. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. So here's the thing too. This oh, this we have to do dot get value or default because um, dot and then here we this is a pain because we have to also convert to a date time offset. Um, oh gosh, uh, is that gonna work? Well, I gotta mess with that. We'll see if um, see what happens. Yeah. See. Well, once we debug it, we can actually see what these values are. So. Yep. So thumbnail URL mm. equals item that snippet. That's interesting to me. Is it, there it is. Thumbnails. Thumbnails. And do we need to get like oh look at that. Medium. Medium, sure. Sounds medium good. dot Pretty small. URL. Give me that URL. This is coming together. And are these both URLs? String. Sorry. String. Yeah, perfect. I guess. Why wouldn't you use a URI for that? Does it matter? I guess not. I, I'm oh. always in debates, right? Because sometimes I'll, I'll get a JSON blob back, and when I put it through a auto you know, class creator, it'll turn it from a string to an URL. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you're like, does it matter? Is, is there a performance hit of creating a... Is it better to create the URL? Like, does it have to create it eventually? Like, what if you don't use it? Are you creating more memories? Is like a string less than a URL? Like, I don't know. 
Yeah, there's more validation to it, yeah. right? Um, yeah, let me see. Uh, and then where is my... It's interesting here. I'm just trying to dot my way through this, but I'm not getting an actual... Where is my Earl for? I think this? you have to. I bet you have to construct it. That doesn't sound right to me. That sounds so wrong. I, I mean, maybe that. it's true, but I don't want to live in a world where that's. <sighs> I mean, come on. I'm looking. There's no URL. Okay, let's just get one second opinion, and I think you're right because I remember Damien having a thing that concatenated a bunch of stuff together but that just seems wrong i feel as if i do this uh, like in the twitter app because they'll give you the status id but they're not going to give you the url like, oh you got to construct that url is that it yeah that seems sad yeah and that one there is if you want to include it in the playlist in the right? playlist but if you just want to go to the video which is probably what you want to do. Like, do you want to always go to the playlist? You know? Yeah. So I, I don't know. That's a good question. But here's a thing where we could say like, Whoa, that's interesting. So he's encoding. He's Hmm. using URL encoding on the ID. And I, and so there's another thing to think about, right? Copy paste. You think this whole thing? Yeah. Both. And the one underneath it too. And then we can put that in YouTube helpers. In a helper's folder, a YouTube utils stack. Well, do so. Question: Do we need that, or could it just live in the service? Is no, anyone else going to need it? I think we're going to need it. You think we'll need it somewhere else? Mm-hmm. Sebastian says, "Keep the raw data and create the URL in the view." But the problem here is, is like this will eventually will be an API that people can consume and you don't want them to have to figure out the URL. We want to just provide, here's your URL, right? We want to make it as as simple as possible. You can put them in here. You just throw them in there. They're going to be static Static anyways, public static. Yeah. Um, So so I think it's here. When in doubt, copy paste it. Perfect. Coded. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So that's because you got a URL and code, all that business. Right. So now we'll say get video URL. Yep. Earl. Earl me. Video. And we got to pass it some items. So we need the ID. Yep. So that is just this ID. That's that ID. ID. You can't have access to it yet. Yeah. And then playlist ID, which we have. Let's, we pass that in. Oops. There's a YouTube playlist ID. Is it? Okay. Made it very verbose. Oops. Yes. And no, last thing. It, what is that thing? Index. Item index. So the item index is you're saying which item in the playlist is it? Is it, you know? Position. So, so this should be on the snippet position. Okay. So item.snippet.position. Strange, though, that you have to give it a, uh, it's interesting, right? Because you have to give it a, a video ID and a playlist ID and also the position. I couldn't figure that out for you, you know? Oh, you know what? This is, yeah, so let's let it do its thing. Control dot. Oh, so th- those don't exist in the class, right? So I need to, it's just because I put it in the wrong spot. should have been included here. Oh. Right? No. Did I do that wrong? Oh, do you want to... Uh... Oh, I was just making a are functions. You, are in you the... inline functioning this right here? Uh, I could. I wasn't going to, but I could. What, it... Yeah, maybe we want to. <laughs> Good. I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't. I, we shouldn't inline it, because what if other people want to use it? No? Yeah, all right. Yeah, well, where was it at before? It was in the right position, no? Was it because I made it static? What does it say? Oh. Uh. Oh. Long. Oh, it's a it's a oh. long. So we can say no, dot no, no, no. get value or default. Oh, huh. 
All right. Okay. So there's my problem there is, and I believe it doesn't exist in the, in the current context. And is that because it's a static? Uh, I think so. Doesn't like it? Let's look at this. Get video URL does not exist. Maybe because it's in a yield? Yeah. All right, let's remove it out of the yield, maybe. Uh, so we do need to create the show separately? Yeah. Uh, so Sebastian is saying outside of the class. And oh. missing. A it, oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, it's magic. John, you know, you put it one squiggly too low. That's what I was saying. I thought I did wrong. Well, I thought, yeah. No, you're good. That's okay. Good. Yeah. Then you can keep Wonderful. it static. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then you can be like, public. When in doubt, make everything public. You have high hopes about it being... Uh, and then check this out. When in doubt, like, okay, so look at how old school this code is. And this is where uh, what you uh, want to do, right? You just come in here and you say, no. Boom. Then we Love it. Put this here, right? And you say, there. Boom. Good. Great. Wow. Right. In fact, I'm shocked that it didn't just do it for me automatically. That should work, right? Did I do it? Did I do it wrong? I don't know. There's so much red angriness down here. Oh, that should work. We yeah. I've done some things wrong somewhere in here. Get shows. Oh, we haven't returned. Do we return? Oh, what's it say? Async streams. Yeah, so I think this yield return. There's a whole bunch of terrible code written here. No, we f I fixed <laughs> it up, I think. I think I fixed oh. up the... You fixed. And then we could do this, right? We could just do... Okay. Turn... New list to show and return it. We're just going to use a link on this puppy. When in doubt, link it up. Wait, where are you? I don't see anything happening. Really? Oh, my goodness. I may need to stop and restart the sharing or something. Oh, there you are. There you go. Oh, interesting. Mine's very different. I'm going to save it. Oh, Should I? Come on, live share. Come on. Oh, interesting. It was like almost there. No. All right, let me uh, let me leave session and re-enter. If I I just copied this. Okay. Then my clipboard. Leaving session. <laughs> Gone. Goodbye. Goodbye. All right, let's go ahead and end it. All right, let's enter so and Alan told us this, and we did kind of think there was a good chance that the yield return wasn't going to work out, right? Yes, that is correct. We didn't listen to the chat, and oh yeah, I'm looking here. There was a <laughs> object disposed exception that had occurred inside of the live share session. Mm. We have been live sharing for one hour and twenty minutes. Yeah, so, so this I have this fixed. I have this code fixed. I swear. Okay, you're just needing to. Get to like into the code. All right, I'm back. You're back. All right, so, yeah. All right, here we go. That should. There's two R's on response.items, and actually, what on uh, what is response.items? Oh, it is. It is not letting me copy and paste this code in. Okay. Weird. Uh. So what, so what I did is I did this. Okay, so. Right there, I did return response items. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm do this for you. So down there, see where it's all red and squiggly. So actually, mine is freaking out too a little bit. Uh oh. I think I let me try stop sharing and reshare. Okay. And live share session. <sighs> it's gone. Oh, 
Quanto, can I just go back in? I wonder if it's a new link. I think it creates a new one. But can't you just invite me now? Oh. oh. Hey, that's me. Yeah. How do I invite you? I think if you go to live share and then... I can copy link. View sh live share window. Very first one. Oh, there you go. And then you add me up. So I'll just paste over to you the link. Okay. Let's try that out. All right. Where do I get my live share link again? Copy. Copy link. Yeah, the one thing that I want, I mean, hopefully they can do is like have it so you can just add me as a. Yeah, that'd be nice. Like, especially if I'm working with, like, I would think too, there's this common scenario of like, you have a coworker you work with every single day, right? Or something. It'd be nice to have like my friends. I could friend you on live share. Yeah, that'd be great. All right, so hopefully once I get this. Yeah, I don't have. So now at least Skype I can get my, rid of it. Yeah, I don't have my Skype on my other window. So now you I know what? Email this code. I'm going to close and open this file because it's um, it's not letting me type in there. Maybe that's what happened. No, I'm actually unable to type. Uh -oh. I might need to close close and reopen open. PS, <laughs> you think? Yeah, go for it. Give that a shot. Hmm. Right. Then you're going to need to send me yet another code. Uh. <laughs> That's the magic of live coding, if, if you've noticed. Can you type in it now? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Oh, there you go. Yes. So I, what, this was like for each item. Yeah, I, I, I linkified it. So what I did is I did uh, a okay. return, return response.items.select. Here, I just oh, sent you one more sharing request. All the way over. <laughs> and then I and then I go to my other computer where yeah I, yeah Visual Air Studio gap. and then I open up that and then I say okay let's go over here is that true this is very this is what's happening right now yeah wow I thought you were making like a stallman like how you browse the internet now and then I go over here and then I open the live share link and I uh, open up Visual Studio. You know that story, right? <laughs> no, no, I don't. It was something. Stallman was like, the way I browse the internet is like I have a daemon that like every URL is like sent or it was some crazy thing. All right, let me see if I can type in this thing so I can fix this up because I left you in a terrible state and of disrep yeah. disrepair. I just went in and I was like, I'm looking. I, it in. was so bad that I had to close the error list because it was just making me so sad. Oh. This is what I would do. Like, just return new show and then share to this. Hmm. Did I do it right? Did I do it right? There's a lot of red. No, link's not there yet. No. Right? Oh. Maybe that? So this is out of the context. I think we have some missing squiggly braces somewhere. You know what? Here, let me just be super lazy and do that. Hmm. So is it because it's static? No, I think we just have some missing curly braces somewhere. Okay. Fair enough. All I right. Think. Let's collapse stuff, right? So it's like. Okay, here we go. That's a that is a great idea, the collapsing. So, uh, uh, what am I doing wrong? Oh, oh my goodness! There's an extra. Yeah, there we go. Oh, Vin was like, "There's an extra semicolon." When semicolons come to get you, there we go. Yeah. Does that work? Is that correct? Close. We're missing a close parenthesis somewhere. On line 24. 
24? That can't be right. 924. Uh, oh, no, that's way over in here. Oh, yeah, because I started to so type So we were this. starting to actually go get the shows, right? Yeah. I was being all fancy, and I was doing, like, VAR shows equals mm-hmm. away get shows. And I was going to come over. Like, while you were away, I was going to ah, start typing. Sneaky. Yeah. And then um, I was going to do something like this. Because we only have the show names right now. So like for Yeah, like, we and so that's like a next step, right, is to fix that up. Yeah. How's that? Okay. That looks neat. Should we do it? Should we run this? I have very little faith, but yes, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's see. Should I set a breakpoint or just run it? Let's, I guess, just run it. I don't even know. Yeah. Because you can always set a breakpoint. That's true. I can, and then refresh the page. Do, 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 do. I mean, it looks, console. it looks correct. I mean, it looks, looks good. There's no red squiggles, so I think we can ship it to production. I like that. There's no red squiggles on your side, so that's. <laughs> Developer exception page middleware. So that's. Ah actually not looking that good and so we're on line 24 well of course it's on line 24 oh we so. broke it oh wait what what did we do wrong hmm. i'll refresh and here oh here's the thing so in execute async is it because Bad request. Domain usage limits. Mm, so, so we need to actually go into the API probably and say, like, don't restrict it, right? I guess. Read the error. Read so it. API, blah, 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 bad, bad location, key invalid, domain usage limits. Oh, so, okay, so it's actually when we're using the API. Yeah, so we oh. got further than you would have thought. Yeah. Um, so now I need to look. The, the API, API key is unrestricted. Restrict your key, blah, blah, blah. But I bet, let's take a look at their, like, do they say anything on their setup stuff? Of, You know what I mean? Hmm. Looking here, read the documentation guide for YouTube. If you don't have a Google account, it'd be very odd if you didn't, but. Uh, I do have that. Create an API key. Every simple access call your application make, makes must include this key. Uh, so here I think is what's going on. Domain oh. verification. I'll blank your screen out so you know, people don't see it. Well, so this actually is okay, okay. for this right. part. We're back. So I- I clicked in my credentials and I went over to domain verification mm. and here it says add domain. And I'm guessing I need to put in just like my local host. Yeah. Right. So, and my app is running on. That's smart. I mean, that's a good way that they did that. Right. So HTTPS localhost 5001. So now yeah, that makes sense because we want this restricts it down. I Google this just in case. Okay. Yeah, it says in the origins field. Uh, hmm. So this is going to make me mess with this. And I'm curious if somebody's like. Uh, here we go. Okay. So from the doc, YouTube API. Use a server key if your application runs on a server. Do not use this key outside of your server code. For example, don't embed it in a web page to prevent quota theft. Restrict your key. Use a browser key if your application runs in a client, such as a browser, to prevent your key from being authorized. Maybe you need to create a different key. Yeah, I think maybe I just need to add. Here, let me try this. Yeah, did you try just localhost? Uh, invalid URL. So I tried to add localhost 5001. What about without the 5001? 
is localhost. Uh, no. So yeah, let's let's Google around for this. Funny though, it's ironic that we're on Google googling around for this, right? So if I go for did you create a server key or an, oh, or a browser key? I created a I'm trying to look here credentials. I'm trying to see what what it is. So application don't restrict this key. So it actually doesn't seem to say application restrictions none. API restrictions don't restrict this key. I'm way up, I feel blessed. Um, interesting. Okay, let me see. You know, let me try one thing here. If in doubt, let's let's make sure that it's actually reading my API key. Okay. You know what I mean? Because that is a possibility. That's true. So here, let's just set this breakpoint. Let's refresh the page. And then I'll I'll put your secrets on so you can look at it. How's that sound? Uh Yes, but I don't need to just Probably delete it. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay. Right. So I'm not. They hit a breakpoint. Oh, because it's a singleton. Up, oh, got to restart that server. Yep. All right. Oh no! You, why don't you refresh it, but then go into get shows, and you can see if it's there. All right, you refresh. Too late. Okay. All right, secret. Tube API key. So you're you're secreting me. Yep, you're secreted. Okay, let me see. Secret. It didn't read it. It didn't so, read it. Yeah, Vin Arrow said, did it get the right key from the config? And the answer is But no. API key here. So you know why? Because uh, you have your other thing and your other thing. You I didn't, didn't you update know. it. You got it. So I'm blaming you somehow. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. That was wise. Well, okay. Yeah. So now I need to go. So actually, can you do the manage user sh or, uh, you know, secret me a second? Yeah, you're secreted. Just tell me okay. when to unsecret. Secret. Right, so. Okay, cool. You can unsecret, and I oh, drop this. Also, in the live share session, when you debug, I can hover over it and get get what it is. <gasps> That's cool. Okay, so now let's go into funny. your. I'm going to your app settings, and okay. I'm just going to copy this into mine. Do it. So I'm grabbing that. Okay. So it's possible that there was no that everything would have worked. Kind of, except for that. Had I not muxed around all yeah. up in your app settings.json. It's the right way to do it. Yeah, it is. Okay, so here I'm just going through. I'm putting in the API key. Okay. That is funny. We could have spent like a ton of time messing around with it, and it would have been all like fine code. Well, you know, when you want to get fancy with your app settings, JSON, all that stuff, you know, you got to do it. So. All, right. all right. Okay, cool. So it's over yeah. on another screen. All right, we're secret unsecreting. We can unsecret. Okay. okay. So oh. cool. Okay, cool. Excellent. Okay, so now I'm going to run. Yeah, and then I can see it on my screen when we hit the breakpoint. Danger. Crazy. Oh, okay. So one more time if you'll secret. Okay. Okay, and go for it. Yeah, they got I read it. it. Got it. Okay. Got it. So now we can unsecret. We'll run this. Okay. Do you should I step through or just go for it? Go for it. All right. So it did show something, but I I'm not seeing. <laughs> there's a lot of monkeys. Yeah. Got 24 of something back, but we don't appear to have any show titles. Oh, that's interesting. Now, so let's take a look in. So we didn't get any errors, though. So I say ship it. <laughs> Probably, um, why don't you put a breakpoint on 60 when we You know what? We it. never set the title. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. I think that might have been like... Um, dun, okay. dun, dun. The refactoring okay. bug, I say. Could be. <laughs> that is that is funny also. Okay, so I've had to control space. Title. But it's good. It got 24 of them. Yeah. Item dot snippet maybe. Dot, it's funny that I bet there's it. an engineer that was just like, "What do we call it? I don't know. Let's call it snippet." And then years later, they're like, "Why did we call this thing snippet?" 
dumbest name. And then so right now what I did is also someone was, uh, Vin was saying like, oh, the thumbnails didn't work. Well, go into your index CS HTML code behind. Yeah. And this is fun. We don't even have to stop and start it running, right? Yeah. So let's go over here and we can go. So those image URLs, we can change. Oh, so we actually do have we to do. change things. We need yeah. to change from a list of string. Yep. Right. So see what I was doing down there on the code behind. Oh, we maybe could have done it. We could have done it without messing around with it. Well, no, we still needed to populate it in here. So you've been you've been fixing me up here? No, but I can. So I had a, oh. I, had, I had a. There we go. This is all. This is all you got to do. We just got to do this. Wait, where? Yeah, there you go. Shows, and then show in there. Let me refresh. Uh, so we don't even necessarily. Uh, we don't want this to be a list of string. We want this to be a list. Uh, we want an I enumerable of show, right? Oh, just a but, list. Yeah. All right. Always be a list. I think. How's that? Does that make cool. you happy? And then we can just say shows equals. Uh, I think you could just say. Right? Uh, you could do that. Well, I mean, no, you would probably do this. You would do. Yeah. You would do dot add. Oh, right. Range. Right, because we created an empty list. If it was an I enumerable. The question is, does it need to be a, a well, a list you, or an I enumerable? You can't really. And you could not, you don't really can't initialize. But I think this is fine. That's so cool. I would actually think of doing an I enumerable and just return. Right. And I don't know why. You want to do this and then delete this yes. and get set. And then you want to do, can you do that? You want that? Yes. Private set. Sure. <laughs> now what private set, because we want to make sure we're only setting it from in here. Yeah. Cause it's public. Yeah. Well, but I don't well. want to set that from the, the UI. Uh, Does that work? Yeah. So now you can just you can, we can build the rest of the UI now live with this thing. Let's right? just run it and then mess with it. So the first time we run it, we're going to get errors because it's going to be unhappy. Yeah, right? Vin, Vin says it's weird not seeing an I notify property changed. Ah, uh, interesting. Yeah, that that's the difference between the web and the. So this? here, so uh, because our model, so we actually our model is, uh, we can do model dot shows shows. That's what I called it. And cool. then one more up there. Damn. Dot count. Sows. And it's probably not count, I bet it's l well, we don't need that. You can just delete that. Yeah, sure. It's fun. But it is fun. But don't need it. Yep. Okay, so now we can go crazy with a bunch of neat stuff here. We can sadly get rid of all the baboons. We'll put them in mock data later. Don't worry. Yep. That's true. Show dot. Uh, what is it? Uh, thumbnail? thumbnail. Thumbnail URL. Ah, cool. Mm -hmm. And then here we can say show. Uh, so here's a problem. Uh oh, not a URL. Nah, it's fine. It's I messed it up. Show dot title. Yeah. Uh, what are we doing? Why is that? That's interesting. Tyler. Uh, there was a small little razor issue. Okay, so here we want the actual description, right? So I'm going to do that. I mean, at least for demo purposes. We may have a designer come in and actually design. Oh, sure. Page. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we'll do at show dot description. Or is that right? I think that's right. That's right. And then, oh, in the URL, a h r f, where the hashtag, aka pound sign, is, right? You could put the show. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. Um, what is it? URL. Sure. All right. Go somewhere. I like that. See what happens. 
it's so weird also people can't see it but i have visual studio open on my other machine here and then just you hit debug and then just all this stuff happens it's so weird oh look at that -na -na -na. this is relatively crazy now we could then we could um it's truncate beautiful, beautiful. We, yeah so we could truncate these down, right? The description. Yeah, I mean, what we'll probably end up doing, you know, I'm assuming here is clean up those titles because those titles are rough. Yeah. Yep. Well, and so that's actually something we do that's that we'll need to add to our list is we do these use a convention. So they'll say it parses out these titles and it says this is the date. And this is the, you know what I mean? Like there's yeah. actually logic in the naming there. And um, then we just need to follow that practice in the back. So we have a title, which is just. Yeah. Although then that ends up changing all the previous ones. So I don't know. Well, I think hey. what we would end up doing is extracting Xamarin or extracting ASP.NET or extracting Visual Studio, right? As the category. Right. Right. Yeah. And then we put a little like. You know, those little like nice little badges basically on it. So people can be like, oh, what is it? And then you can have filters mm -hmm. on it. And then uh what then you could just yeah, just extract the names and we could clean it up, I think. Hey, but I'm actually this is I think we can be happy about this. I feel pretty good. I feel pretty good. Yeah. So this is and and then we could um there is definitely stuff we could do. Let's take a look at our work list and see what happened. Um, that I, I, I think we can do, is that done? I think, sure. Shift I mean, it. I think we can call that done. Yeah. We don't have this, so we actually didn't do any of that stuff. Classic. Um, Remember when last week we planned out what we were going to do this? Yeah. And then, and then this week I like totally ignored all that. <laughs> One thing too is Tim's giving me trouble about this. Retitle the home page. Title the home page. What does that mean? Because right now it says home page. <laughs> Actually, there's a title. So I think I can do that one really quickly and you know get Tim off my back. There you go. So here, title is you know community. Dotnet community standups. Sure. Ooh. Yeah, Janice, you was saying we could do like. A small cards and large cards like when you tap on one it expands with the details or oh yeah like that, right? yeah and there's definitely i i feel like we should even kind of play with look around more at the bootstrap stuff as far as the card mm -hmm. you know stuff uh you know what i mean we there's more we could do as far as like expanding and heck there's even like you know small little animations and you know what i mean like what happens when you uh, click on it does the your did does the url work is the question oh, it does work Dun, dun, dun. You know, here's another thing too that I don't know if if we can actually make this work. There's a two minute wait at the beginning of each show mm. as of the kind of spin up thing. Yep. And somebody was saying like, "Hey, you could change your URLs to include that time code." Yeah. What you can do is you can do a start out, right? So go into the share button on that YouTube page. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The share. Yep. And then you can do see how it says start. And then boom, it adds that time code. So what we could do is on the, we should add this as a feature card where okay. it's like um, append start time to the data, basically. So what we would do is we're going to end up pulling data from a uh, markdown file somewhere, right? Or a JSON file mm -hmm. for additional things, I think, right? That was our idea. Community kind of. Uh, sorry, I was trying to type and do something at the same time. Like I was thinking that like at some point we'll have like the ability to. Oh, for show notes and like community contribution and stuff. Yeah. And what we could do is in that file, we could have a start time in it. Right. And then yeah. we could put that in there. Yep. Cause I was going to say, it's not always the exact same thing, but you're right. If somebody like, um, time oh janice is saying what if we pulled the video through video indexer i haven't used video indexer at all so that's the azure video indexing service yeah i mean you can but there's definitely a lot more that goes on there that's that's a more <laughs> significant thing and then you also have to worry about you know there's 
the Azure costs and stuff, but it could be pretty cool, including stuff like um, uh, speech to text and, you know, all kinds of neat stuff. That'd be kind of cool, yeah. Okay, so do we want to do anything else today? Um, well, you were going to change the homepage name. Oh, you did I that? did. You did it? I did okay. already. So I'll show you where I did that. And that, that should be right. a separate commit, obviously. Oh. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just, you don't have to put in a separate commit. <laughs> and then say fixes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's it. And I will show you that's complete here. You know, it would be cool. I mean, the video indexer, we would just need to download the video on our end. We would need to re-upload it to video indexer. Mm-hmm. Oh. Backlog item. Yeah. Video indexer integration question mark. Yeah. That'd be cool. It would be interesting. It would be interesting. Yeah, I mean, using Microsoft products to build Microsoft things. Yep. And especially that's a neat thing where you can do like a background. It -hmm. can be a function that, you know, like maybe knocks a few of them out at a time and stuff. Yeah. So. Like that. Cool. Uh, did I forget? Was there something else we wanted to do? That's a good question. What's in our in progress thing? Because we didn't. So this one, there's mock data okay. and a footer with links. We could set up some mock data now that we know like our general data shape. Yeah. What you could do is, is there a way to take the current shows? Like if you come in, if I had a breakpoint on. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Like, is there a way for us to just format that as a json file or yeah, something json convert boom and then read uh, that in and then put it into a json embedded resource in which you read out and then boom yeah okay so uh would you want to do json convert so directly in the here Go right in there actually add a breakpoint to line you add it to 20 25 and then, yep. yeah, then refresh it, right? I imagine this has just, JSON installed on it, no? I think it's like a, it's in every single ASDONIC app, right? Question mark. Well, so things are changing around now. You mean the, the JSON.net? Yeah. Oh, so we have to do step over. Yeah, and then what if you, in your local window, Oh, watch, this is fun. Your watch window, actually. You did like Newton soft dot. Are you in the immediate or? I don't think you can see my watch oh. window. I'm just kind of mm. serialize object. Can you see me type? No. Shows. That doesn't work. I guess about serialize. Is it serialize object? Oh, can you actually see me type inside that? I cannot. Oh, that'd be crazy. Yeah. Did you, did you create a new, is there a static method? Serializer? Uh, oh, yeah, dot JSON convert dot. Yeah, there we go. So type in that window. People can't see it because yep. it's underneath me. I can, I can move myself on. There we go. Now people can see it. So if you type in newtonsoft dot mm-hmm. JSON dot mm-hmm. JSON convert, dot serialize object mm-hmm. and pass in shows. Uh, Enter. Boom. There's your JSON blob. That is just some craziness. And I also did it on my end too, by the way. So Yeah, and uh, Genescu pointed out too that uh, the IntelliCode was helping there. Like it's, Oh, that's it's, cool. Yeah, it was giving some pretty good suggestions, so. So then you could put that in a file somewhere, right? And then, yeah. So I mean, oh, where to put this? I guess I could throw it around. Mock data or sample data? Probably, yeah. Just a little here, put the yeah, yeah, there. You go. Um, JSON. Boom. This is wonderful. Look at that. And then like cool. we, we don't have like so far we don't have let's look at this data. Is this data correct? 
Because we didn't actually step through the date or anything, right? You just we just imagined that the show date was the correct date. Right, right. Yeah. Well, it did show them in the right order. Yeah. This looks good. It doesn't have future ones in it, which yeah, we don't have support, and we haven't tested with future. Yeah. And then, the, oh, because we actually, you know what? I don't think I added the future ones to that playlist. That's probably right. why. Um. Yeah. So topic we don't have in there yet, which I think is fine. That's cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it looks good. I mean, this looks pretty solid. I mean, so so that is some sample data, and then yeah. we could we could the way I would think I guess to do this is you'd have like an app setting that says like load sample data, or you could even I don't know if it's being too clever, but we could say if YouTube key is null. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. There you go. Let's do that. So let me let's try that out. Or let's say it equals like nothing, right? Just boom. So are you in the service? Yeah, I put it in the service. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so where are you at? So if we go into the service up top, what I would do is I would say if um, string uh, is, uh, I love that my your IntelliCode also comes over into the live share session, by the way. Mm -hmm. People can't see it, but it's totally happening. Um, then if that's string empty, then you could just do like uh, return uh, JSON uh, convert dot deserialize object of list of show. This is beautiful. Right, and then this would be something. And there we have to do file from, we have to load from file, right? Yeah, load from file. Oh, yeah, because you just put it as a file on disk, right? Yep. And then, yeah, you could do uh, file dot. Read all text. Yeah, we'll just block on it. Because when in doubt, just block on <laughs> it. Now, will this, will this, will, this will be okay, you think? No. Uh, so you actually, to read from sample, yeah. So we need to, it's, that's interesting. I usually like go and look this up because I don't know, like reading relative to the application, mm. you know what I mean? And there's also, you have to do copy. So th from this then sample data, what? I need to do yeah. um, content and I would say copy always. Yeah. We assume. Yeah. We don't really know. We're just, you know. I mean, why wouldn't you want to always? So <laughs> Sebastian says, I host environment content provider. Oh, oh, wonderful. Okay. We, we need to get that in here then. Which we yeah. should be able to do, right? We should be able to say, I host environment. Or no. Host environment? Can you just get that? Is that a thing that you could do? I don't know. Control dot. It's not happy with that. Not like whatever that is. That might not even be a thing. Yeah, and you know, another issue here is, I don't know if we're cluttering up our service a bit. Like maybe this, well, no. I was gonna say maybe we should pass in the test data to our service, um, mm -hmm. but I don't know if that's ugly. You know what I mean? Yeah, what I would probably do here is I would probably create another service that was like mock yeah. YouTube shows to make it really clean. And then I would have probably a setting um, that calls. Yeah. It. And the, that mock YouTube service could even <laughs> just, yeah, I mean, that could be super simple. It doesn't even, I guess what I'm thinking there is it could even just statically create and return them. But then you're going to need a uh, interface. You're right. Yeah. Extract interface. You could. Uh, what is it? Quick actions, refactorings. No, I don't want that. Um, refactor. Fashion's helping me. Microsoft extensions, file providers, I file provider, content root file provider. Mm -hmm. But is that in ASP.NET Core 2? It is. Nope, it's only in 3.0 preview. That's not available yet. Wait, is it? It's not available in 2.2. That's a 3.0 feature. So. 
Uh, I thought there was a refactoring here where you could do extract interface. Maybe it's a resharper feature. No, on the class name. Up top. Oh, I was on the. <laughs> that's beautiful. Uh, extract interface. Oh, hey -o. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Boom. Cool. And then that. Uh, now we need to go and change our. This here. Yeah, and then you just put in the interface in. Then you should be able to add a new class in there. Uh, new class in where? In your services. Now oh, right, right, right. One, right, yeah. Yep. And then if we're getting really fancy, you'd probably add like a new folder called interfaces. Interfaces, blah, 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 blah. I don't know. Okay. Do you like to do that? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I man. I wait for it to bug me, you know? Yeah, like how many like are I we going to have? Yeah. Yeah. I go I go folder crazy. That's what I do. Uh, so Sebastian's saying I hosting environment is in Tutu. Okay. I, let me look. I, for some reason, I can't change that doc to it. I'm going to look it up here. It's probably in here. Uh, there it is. Yeah, there it is. I, oh, I think it was, I was on newer docs. Or, uh, how to use. How to use multiple hosts. That's in the configure thing. I don't know how to do this. I guess you, yeah, I hosting environment should be there. Yeah, it's a service. Just inject it where you want. Okay. So okay. Then create a new, uh, yeah, create a new, uh, all right. Constructor. A constructor. And then try to take in an I hosting environment. Okay. We're learning along with all of you. I guess I can put my camera back. Hello. Cool, cool. And then, Gotta exist somewhere. It's just taking a second. There it is. Did that bring in the right one? I think is so. Host environment environment dot and then it's content provider. Yep. Uh content root path. Oh content root file provider. Dot. Oh. <laughs> Uh, get file info, get file info. I love it. We're like pair program. We should invite, uh, Sebastian on the live share yeah. too. And here, uh, so string sub path. This is pretty cool. Oh, that's Thank cool. you. So here, and it's sample data dot Jason. Yeah. Get file info. Interesting. This is a i file info and then we can say sample data and then here i could be like sample data equals at yeah and clean this up a little bit here and then we should be able to do bring in system io bring in some newton soft dot json so this actually represents, um, oh, and this is based on the root of the web app, which I, we did put it. Oh, so Sebastian, you're saying put it in dub, dub, dub root. I can just do that physical path. I want whatever is easy. You think it's, so, in, I, don't, I don't even know if you need to put it in dub, dub root. Yeah, maybe not. So I did put it in copy always, but if it was in dub 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 root, um, it would already be there. Okay, so I don't know. I do it right. Yeah. Deserialize object file read all text. So task dot result from. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. From result. Then. Getting less red. Is that right? Cannot com 
going from task of show to task of show. One is an enumerable and one is a list. Take that. I, take, take that, C sharp. Uh, wow. That's pretty cool. So, um, so I'm not sure actually where we want to put the logic for this if for swapping that out. And we're at three o'clock. I'm not sure. Maybe we want to. Well, let's test it. Why don't we? Okay. Why don't we change our startup code? Right over there, easy. just to to call and then run it and see if it works. And then we'll just we'll leave that in. And then this way we could we could work on the site. And now that we have the data, we could put some more information in that mock data if we needed to, like the actual tags, and we could work on the UI without having to make a web request to our backend every single second. Mm -hmm. That'd be ideal. But. You're right, and then we don't worry about the API limits and stuff. Yeah, and if someone wanted to now grab this project, they could work on it without having to set up an API project. Yeah. But apparently fail, 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 fail. No, fail fast. So, of course, it's not happy with our... Oh, you know what you did? Go into your code behind of your page. Yeah. Code behind of the page. Sorry. Index. Yeah. See, we're passing in a, uh, a the service, not the interface. Look at that. Both places. And that one, too. Yep. Uh, da, 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 where? Oh. Sorry. I, I don't know. I, I I always put things in the wrong place. So no, nah, it's good. Is it good? I don't know. And while we're at it, let's clean this. Oh, up. that's a good idea. Remember when we just had names? Now we have objects. So one other thing that I want to prioritize higher, and I'm I want to put it down while I'm thinking of it, is I want to get some like automated testing. I want to mm. move this up a bit. Because I think that is important. Okay. I would like to like add a test project and just have some basic like health check stuff going. Okay. All right. So, all right. So it's still running. Well, I mean, usually on my live stream, I I uh, recommend no testing, but you know, just yeah. So but I, I would like to see. Yeah. I am not a like TDD person. I just am trying to get myself in the habit of like set up a test project and start like having some basic integration and health checks yeah. going from the beginning. So like does the page load and it's super easy now with the health checks in the latest ASP.NET. Um, Pretty cool. Yeah. All right. So it's executing. Let's it's step into this puppy. All right. Uh, step in. I forget. Is it F eight? I use the IDE. So I don't F 11 mm -hmm. step into. Oh, so I have a weird keyboard that makes it a little harder. I just step. In where is it? Right there. So it should be, yeah, that one. There you go. All right. Now, what's what's in that sample data in this file? Oh, it does. It does exist. Look at that. It does exist. Huh. That's that's just some nutty stuff. All right. Let's see what happens. The blow up. It's just, this is like wow, what I happened if I wrote code and it actually worked. So yeah. now, now just to like prove to ourselves. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to change the first one and I'm going to say. You don't believe it. Now, this also has a file watcher. So I bet if you refresh it too, like save that. Right. I just saved it. Now let's go over here. Because I was going to read the file. There we go. Boom. Test data. So this is great. So we're reading our mock data. We're not hitting the API endpoint. And it's easy if we need to. To change uh, that mock data to be what we want it to be. Yeah. Here, right? You know what? This is one of those places where I wish you could put comments in a JSON file. You know where I'm going with this because yeah. we're, we're going to forget what we did with that JSON convert business. That's true. Oh, wow. We'll have to watch our Twitter stream. Yeah. Or, I mean, our, our Twitch stream. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so it's it's a little after three. Should we wrap? Here? I think so. Yeah, let's clean up our let's let's one commit the code. Don't commit forget the code. that. Let's do it now. Okay. People can grab it. We can commit this code. Mm -hmm. All right. So right about now, my computer decides to be slow. 
So I think we can add all this. And again, super nice. I don't have to worry about like committing my my keys, right? Because that's in that separate user data. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So I'll say uh, added YouTube API and mock data. A good little tutorial of using that YouTube API. I never, there's a lot of uses, use cases for that. For that one, I yeah, think about it. and it, you know, okay, like like any API, I took playing around with it a bit to like get you know like figure out what we needed to do. But then I think a lot of our stuff where we're like, oh no, it's super hard, and it's like, no, we just screwed up like a few lines of code. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. So exploration. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we'll that push. has been pushed. We'll go over to here. Yeah. We'll check this out. Five commits. Boom. It's all done. Wonderful. In our projects, we should probably update our in. Oh, we did everything. Oh, no. Do we do everything? Oh, I've been create basic website. We could probably. So maybe we should change the like create new things for this. Yeah. So let me create a new. I'm going to create a must have and I'll say a countdown header. Right. And hit yep. add. And then I'll do another one that says footer with links. This is a must have, right? And then boom, now we can then. Now we can drop this over, right? Boom, get out of here. Did That's it. wonderful. Okay. And then I'm going to edit this note. I'm going to say we did the mock data on 611. Save note. Now you got it. Cool. Cool. Nice. Cool. Good. good. Okay. Um, That's it. We did That's it. That's it. We well did done. It. High five. I actually, I was a little surprised. I didn't know if this uh, whole YouTube integration where that was going to go. So. I don't know. You told me that's what you wanted to do. So we're, so we're I there. know. I was going a little rogue, but I was kind of like, I just wanted to actually, because I'll tell you, like, if I'm working with an API, the longer I defer working with the API, the more guesses I'm making. True. You know what I mean? And I then know, it's yeah. like you can go way down this road, and then all of a sudden later you're like, oh, that API doesn't give me that data. Or it takes multiple API calls, one to get the, you know, one thing and another to page to whatever. So I like to actually get my data and then like play with it. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. That's a good point. And then we actually mocked it out afterwards and then it's pretty real data. We don't have to type a bunch of words. Right, right. Oh. And then we also see some things like, for instance, here, this makes it very clear, like, hey, our um, descriptions are kind of long. Yeah, you we're, yeah, we're going to need to probably have our own descriptions that are read out of a file, right? Probably. Yep. So I think what's going to end up happening long term is, and not long term, I mean for V1, is that mm -hmm. we probably try to clean up this data here, but then have some way of having the actual things we want to display here. You know, yeah, and then we can also because we're working with the YouTube API, we can actually do some automated cleanup of some of this stuff. Yeah. And we might not even want the description here because the description is kind right. of the title. That's a YouTube thing, right? Yeah, that's a YouTube thing. So we probably don't even want that there, and this would look a thousand times better already. But I kind of want it. Like, go to dot dot net, and then tap on mobile for me. I right, cool. Then scroll down just a little bit, and then you'll see all like, a little bit right there. Love then Xamarin Customer Showcase. Mm -hmm. Right there. Uh, sorry, Xamarin Customer. Yeah. Yes. And what I was thinking is, see how we have like UPS that says Bot Framework, Azure Account. Right. Or, it could be like Xamarin, Visual Studio, ASP.NET, right? And then yep. the different show types. And I um, think Bootstrap calls those pills. Pills. Yeah. And then this will fit into the architecture of this website, which is where we're going to put it anyways, because these things already exist. <laughs> Sebastian's saying the show will last until next year. Hey, look, buddy, we hooked us up to YouTube today. I'm I'm calling that kind of a success. <laughs> Basically, it's finished product at this point. So yeah, ship you know. it. <laughs> ship yeah, it. Yeah, no, th this is that is actually um what you're saying there. That's a, a pretty nice pattern, like uh. Um, for the bootstrap, like they have cards that have those kind of pills and stuff. It's kind of a standard. Uh, yeah. And then I think we just get rid of that. That long description, that long description, but then also like we will want it so you can tap on it like details. And then maybe we do something, right? We go to, we yeah. expand it down and that's, or we go to a GitHub page mm -hmm. or something that has details and has the show notes. Cause we're going to have, 
we should get a, we should mock something together what we actually want these things to look like like the, maybe we're missing information right because we want to have the url list on there and does that come from the description or do we put that somewhere else right do we want right. to have paging do we want to get more than 20 or do we just send them to the playlist you know yeah good question so these are all good questions. Okay, do yeah. you, we want separate work items for that, or is that just kind of covered in what we've got? I say that these are things that we think about over the next week, and then we come back and we do stuff. Sounds great. Okay, cool. All right, well, well we're at time, but two, two hours, two hours, 12 minutes, great. This is uh, wonderful. I'm proud. I, and also, I, I do love collaborating, coding with you, and I think here we can start to... Once we have this, we can really start to lay down the objects, figure out the little pieces, and then go from there. But really not that bad. I mean, then what we'll do is going to be great because what people don't know is that once we put this into a function, like mm -hmm. it's just going to be like run that every night, right? Or run that every hour and just read yeah. data. It's going to be butter. It's going to be great. functions are amazing. I love and and it's great that you can write your functions in .NET. And so like you can basically prototype it. We can. I like playing with this where it's like monkey around, refresh the page really quick. Yeah. But then when we want to throw it up in, in, and we may even decompose it into a few functions or something. Um, yeah. But yeah. Cool. So. All right, man. Very cool. That's it. All right. We did it. All right, cool. Thanks everyone for, boom. Thanks everyone <laughs> for tuning in. Of course, I want to thank uh, new subscribers uh, and also new followers. So thanks everyone that's been coming in. Uh, so Sleepix, thank you for the follow. Harry, thank you for the Twitch Prime. Super duper appreciate that resub. Abialof something. Thanks for the follow. And William, thank you for the follow as well. Super appreciate that in case I missed it. That's it. John, thank you so much for being amazing and being awesome. <laughs> and of course, telling people about this on the .NET Community Stand-Up. And you can go to the .NET Community Stand-Up. That, that's on the YouTube on .NET Foundation, right? Uh, yeah. And it's also like you can find, um, we have them listed right now until the, the new site thing goes up. It's live.asp.net. Yep. Um, and then also if you follow... The .NET handle or the ASP.NET handle, both of those tweet out the shows as they come up. So. And we might as well tell people like what's on the next .NET community standup if it's available so people know. So I just looked it up and Emo is going to have uh, um, Asan Khan on who's going to talk about the new JSON library that's in .NET, which we wow. just talked about. So yeah, boom. yep. Anyways, right. so that is exciting. And then next week for the ASP.NET community stand up on Tuesday. So today's was Blazor. Um, next week is going to be the preview six, the ASP.NET Core 3 preview six show. And so we're going to dig into all the new features and stuff there. Nice. So. Awesome. Yeah. All right, John. Well, thank you so much. And thanks everyone for tuning in. I will be back on Friday as always for more Xamarin stuff. Probably working on Handsome and Forms. That's all I do every day. I just work on a Handsome and app. And it's coming along. It's really, cool. I'm feeling really good about it. So, all right. Thank you, John, so much. I will yep. talk to you soon. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And bye-bye.